Today we're going to look at 20 noted prodigies and the age at which they first learned calculus. Shown here is Korean prodigy Kim Eun Young at age 7, once listed in the Guinness Book with an IQ of 210, solving a differential equation on Fuji TV Japan in 1969. To begin with, in 1665, Isaac Newton, then aged 22, the now second-ranked smartest person of all time with an IQ of 220, invented independently the first form of calculus, which he called the method of fluxions and fluence, as a tool to determine the position and velocity of a falling or accelerating body. In 1674, Gottfried Leibniz, then aged 28, the 14th smartest person of all time, with an IQ of 195, independently invented his own variant of calculus. Young Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, a German philosopher and mathematician, began working on his calculus in 1674 while staying in Paris. On November 11, 1675, he made a breakthrough, finding the area under the graph of the function y equals f of x. His notation via the adoption by the Bernoulli brothers is what we use in modern times. He invented a whole new system of notation for his discovery, using an elongated letter S for the Latin word summa for integration, and the D for the Latin word differentia for differentials. In 1931, Richard Feynman, then aged 13, the 34th smartest person of all time with an IQ of 190, was reading calculus for the practical man and had learned differential and integral calculus that year or by age 15. Mathematics then is a way of go going from one set of statements to another. It's evidently useful in physics because we have all these different uh, ways that we can speak of things and it permits us to develop consequences and analyze the situations and re-change the laws in different ways and to connect all the various statements. In 1994, Christopher Rada, then aged 12 and being cited with an IQ of 225, was taking college-level courses in physics and multivariable calculus, and at age 14, upon arriving at Caltech, registered one of the highest scores in the history of the Institute's mathematics diagnostic tests. Einstein, at age 12, the now-ranked third-smartest person of all time with an IQ of 215, had taught himself calculus, and by 13, integral and differential calculus, and according to a 1935 anecdote, wherein a Princeton rabbi showed him a clipping from Ripley's column entitled, The Greatest Living Mathematician Failed in Mathematics. Einstein laughed. I never failed in mathematics correctly. Before I was 15, I had mastered differential and integral calculus. John Mill, by age 11, the now ranked 63rd smartest person of all time with an IQ of 185, had learned calculus. Stephen Stafford, to cite a recent news media prodigy example at age six had learned advanced mathematics, geometry by seven, algebra two by nine, pre-calculus by 10, and at age 11 was studying calculus at Morehouse College. Similarly, Sky Chow at age 11 had learned calculus and at age 12 was studying physics at Florida International University. I know that I want to be a physicist. And probably, possibly, I'll probably do research, you know, teach also there along the way. But what kind of physics, I'm not exactly sure. At number 13, we have Michael Grost, one of the more famous child prodigies of the late 20th century, who at age 8 had worked out 2 to the power of 80th on a blackboard in two hours' time. And by age 10, was so advanced with calculus that his mother had to enroll him in Michigan State University. He was estimated with a IQ of 200. At number 12, we have American William Sidus, the greatest of all American child prodigies, who by age nine had mastered differential and integral calculus, and shortly thereafter was enrolled at Harvard in their mathematics department and concordantly working at MIT. And by age 18, in 1916, was using the partial differential equation based second law of thermodynamics to derive a theory of animate versus inanimate form dynamics in the context of the laws of the universe. 
At number 11, we have Dragon de Mello, who at age 9 had learned calculus, and by age 11 set the world record at that time by completing a college degree in computational mathematics. At number 10, we have the great John Newman, currently ranked as the 32nd smartest person of all time with an IQ of 190, who at age 8 had learned calculus, and in 1934, by age 31, had worked out a partial differential equation based thermodynamic model of economics where free energy was equated to cash value, entropy was equated to liquidity, and energy was equated to economic value. We need more training in science on all levels in college, in the high schools, and more training of high school teachers. All along the line, we'll have to accelerate a great deal. Up to this point, we have covered the fact that Newman learned calculus at age 8 and at age 31 derived a partial differential equation based thermodynamic free energy theory of cash value that Citus, after learning calculus at age 9, at age 18 derived a thermodynamic theory of animate and inanimate, and likewise Harada, after learning calculus by age 12, went on by age 18 to derive a chemical thermodynamic model of relationships. We notice the salient feature that from among those cited with an IQ of 200 or above independently, each has went on to derive a chemical thermodynamic model of human existence. Which brings us to a concluding point that in modern times it is no longer satisfactory for one to say and dismiss calculus as but something that will never be used in real life. Whereas correctly, calculus is the language of the explanation of existence, being that the partial differential of a unit of heat is now defined as the inexact differential delta Q. Therefore, the smart or discerning person needs to understand the language of firstly calculus, secondly partial differential equations in order to understand aspects of human existence, whether that of economics, relationships, or in terms of the universe as a whole. Can you tell us how Goethe's day, the, principle, the main principle of physical chemistry was affinity? How does that translate into thermodynamics in terms of your work? Well, my, uh, these terms uh, apply directly to uh, the laws of chemistry, uh, which I use in my work. Um, there are two ways to approach this. There is the Ising model, which very many uh, physicists use. Mm -hmm. And there is the Bragg-Williams model, which is used in chemistry as the chemistry law of regular solutions. And uh, I tend to use the law of regular solutions because people are not, uh, they are not spins. People are, people are elements or agents with attraction or distraction. So what people can do is they can attract each other if the energy is positive, or they can distract each other, repel each other if the energy is negative, and they can be indifferent if the energy, interaction energy is zero. Okay. So these three possibilities are um, there, and atoms can only do the same thing. They can approach each other if it's positive energy, and if it's negative, they will repel, and they will just uh, mix without interaction if the energy is zero. At age five, Jeremy Schuler had learned pre-calculus and had read through William Dunham's Journey Through Genius, The Great Theorems of Mathematics, and by age seven learned calculus, and by age 12 was an engineering freshman at Cornell. Before, I knew simple linear equations, and by six I learned more advanced algebra. And seven I started learning calculus and... Promethea. Pythea, at age seven, had learned calculus and completed her BS in mathematics by age 13. Now, you also were trying to cover your mother, yes. and you were trying to talk to dispatch. Right. So you had three things going on at once? Right. Okay. Were you able to do any one thing completely at any time? 
Well, my mother was pretty well positive at all times, but as for conversations, no, because it's not easy to talk to dispatch when you're yelling at a guy who's about to start shooting again. Jerry Newport, at age seven, was using calculus to compute third and higher roots, during which time he self-discovered much number theory in elementary school, perfect numbers, the Fibonacci sequence, and in 2010 was the world title holder of the most versatile calculator. Terence Tao had begun to learn calculus at age seven. By age nine, he was very good at university level calculus, and by 11, he was thriving in international mathematics competitions. Murray Gelman, the curator of the Eightfold Way of Particle Physics, had taught himself calculus by age seven. Michael Kearney, by age six, graduated high school and had learned calculus, and by age 10, graduated from college with a degree in anthropology. He currently holds the world record for youngest college graduate. Next we have Saborno Bari, whose father a mathematics and physics professor had begun teaching him chemistry, math, and physics by age two, who by age three had learned trigonometry, and by age four was doing calculus problems on national television. So, why do I need to Mm hmm it's canceling eight. Eight. So now. Eight. Eight. Eight. Yeah. <laughs> In second place we have Bala Morali Ambati, who by age four had mastered calculus. By age thirteen graduated from college with a BS in biology and by age 17, graduated from medical school, thereby setting a world record. Meet Bala Murali Ambate, the world's youngest doctor, who graduated from medical school at the ripe old age of 17. Current New York State law requires a person to be 21 before they can practice medicine. Um, a bill has been passed by the Assembly and is pending in the Senate uh, to make an exception for me. Coming in at number one, on our top 20 countdown of prodigies in calculus, we have Korean physicist Kim Un Yong, who at age three had begun to learn differential calculus and was solving integral calculus problems and or intricate math problems, as he says, by age four. And in 1967, at age four, solved an advanced stochastic differential equation. At age five, was solving complicated differential and integral calculus problems and age seven in 1969 was on Fuji TV Japan national television solving the following differential equation. Kim Young, 210 IQ'su ile tarihin en zeki adamı. 8 Mart 1962'de Kore'de doğan Kim Young isimli süper dahi dünyanın en zeki insanı olarak Guinness rekorlar kitabında yer alıyor. 3 yaşında Hanyang Üniversitesi'nde kabul edilen, 4 yaşında üniversiteye gitmekle kalmayıp aynı zamanda o yaşta Japonca, Korece, Almanca ve İngilizce dillerine de hakim olan Koreli, bu alanda da ayrı bir rekorun sahibiymiş. 5 yaşına bastığında en zor integral ve diferansiyel denklemleri çözebilen dahinin IQ'su 210'un üzerinde olduğu söyleniyor. 6 yaşına kadar fizik bölümünde misafir öğrenci olarak okuyan Yang, 7 yaşında Amerikan Havacılık ve Uzay Dairesi tarafından Amerika'ya davet almış.